Hey guys, Kirk here, and thank you for joining me on a new video on the channel. In this video, I want to showcase how to set up nanite tessellation in a project and showcase building a master material um, for any mesh that you want to use um, with displacement. A very simple video, uh, but I thought I would do a tutorial on it. <laughs> uh, simple as that. Um, if you have any questions about any videos on my channel, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the description. Um, and jump on there and say hello um, and all that good stuff. Um, I also have a donation link in the description as well. So if this helps you and you're feeling generous, a little bit of a donation keeps me going on the channel to improve my videos. So yeah, uh, let's get going. Okay, so for this to work uh, properly, uh, you will need to have the engine version 5.4 preview installed on your machine, laptop, whatever you're using. Um, simply do that by getting your Epic Games launcher. Um, I do have another few videos at the beginning of my channel showcasing how to set up Epic Games and all your engines and stuff like that. Uh, but simply I'll briefly do it now so at the top here you'll see engine versions click the little plus icon and in the drop down menu here at the top right where it's greyed out you'll have at the top here 5.4.0 preview of course I don't have it there because I already have the engine installed um, just a brief one as well if you go here and on this bit here it won't do it for me now because it's 5.2 um, but if you click on this little down arrow Oh, sorry, my mistake. If you click on the install button, a box will appear and you'll have the ability to enable options. If you're not making anything for mobile phones or cell phones, if you're American, uh, just scroll to the bottom of the options and disable the Android, iOS and Linux. Obviously, if you're using Linux, uh, then don't uninstall that. Uh, but it just reduces the size of your engine. Um, let's see if I could see it on my engine here. So if I go to options, yeah, perfect. So here you have core components, starter, content, templates, engine source. I recommend using all them. But if I scroll down, you'll see target platforms, Android, iOS, and Linux. As I'm using Windows, I don't need any of these. And you can see that's 20 gig. That's almost 30 gig of uh, space needed just for them three things. If you're not planning on making any kind of mobile game or using Linux then just uncheck them and your install will be a lot cheaper okay so that with that being said after you have finished uh, installing your engine just click on the launch button and we'll go ahead and create this project okay so once open you'll be greeted with this uh, screen Unreal uh, project browser um, what we're going to use is a game template and I'm going to use a third person template. Uh, this will be good for the future. I'd always recommend using a third person template. Obviously, unless you plan on making a first person game. Um, but yeah, go with a third person template because you get the mannequins installed and you can use them for scale reference and things like that. So select third person. I'm going to name my project here at the bottom right of the screen. And I'm going to call this Nanite underscore Displace underscore Tut. Very simple. Uh, at the bottom left here, you have Project Location. Mine's in the correct place. Just click this little folder here and assign your pro, uh, your yeah your project to whichever folder you want. And then just click Create. Okay, welcome back. So, presuming you installed your engine correctly which I presume you would have done um, you may have had to click on certain little windows allowing JavaScript and um, all that good stuff uh, that's completely normal so don't worry about that um, and when you first opened your engine to create your project it may have taken some time that is completely normal when you first open a uh, new engine and a new project you need to do all these pre-requests and all that good stuff but hopefully now uh, you're in engine and in your new um, new project in the third person template arena if you like 
The first thing I like to do when I open a new project is position my camera to where I always want to be. And this seems like a good area. Um, and what I do is bookmark it. So left control on the keyboard and one. Uh, this is, you'll see there at the bottom right, it said saved bookmark. Uh, this is presuming you're using Windows, of course, uh, Linux and Command, uh, I'm not sure, um, on all them businesses. <laughs> okay, so now we're in our project. What we need to do now is enable a certain plugin. Go to settings, go to plugin. You can also get to the plugins window by the edit at the top left here. Go to plugins. Uh, make sure you've got all plugins highlighted and just type nanite like so and you'll see nanite displaced mesh um, with this release of 5.4 preview uh, they've decided to do the nanite displacement into a plugin uh, which is a good move in 5.3 um, they tried to integrate nanite tessellation into the engine uh, wasn't very successful uh, there was lots and lots and lots of bugs uh, to clean up and it made the engine unstable so they've obviously chose to do it via a plugin so you can enable and disable um, nanite displacement um, through the plugins which stops the engine from you know crashing and stuff like that uh, so we're going to click this little check mark it's going to tell you where uh, blah 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 this is a in beta version just click yes and then it will ask you to restart now right here so go ahead and click restart okay and welcome back uh, you should uh, land in here uh, with your plugins window still open um, as you can see you might not be able to tell but if I move my mouse around my mouse will stutter every now and again especially when you try and move the windows well it's fully loaded now but every now and again with preview builds this is normal your mouse will look like it's stuttering and looks like the engine is going to crash uh, that is not the case it's because it's just a complete brand new engine version um, and this is quite normal just to let you know okay so now we're here we can actually close down the project now because we need to add some details into our default engine.ini file uh, so once you've settled and you've enabled your plugin just go ahead and close your window again okay so now we've backed out of our engine we do need to make some changes uh, inside the project files. Um, instead of navigating through all your folder structure and things like that to get to the default ini file, uh, default engine file, my mistake, um, you can simply go to where you've created your new project here, right click and show in folder. All right, so, and it'll take you straight to where your project is. Um, here is your main project startup file this is what unreal uh, epic games launcher calls for when you start your project blah 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 uh, what we need is a config folder at the top here and you'll see here we've got a default engine dot any file don't worry about my icon that's because i use notepad plus uh, plus it's free software to download um, very good for coding if you're a coder um, and just general pieces of information uh, it makes it nice but on your default engine, just double click it and it should open in your Notepad++ or Notepad or whatever kind of text based software you're using. Uh, but I do like Notepad++ as you can see it makes it look a lot nicer. Um, what we need to do is add two lines of instructions to our script engine.render settings. Um, you've probably seen this on other videos on YouTube. Uh, it's the same thing you have to do it but i'll take you through it um and i'm going to put it right under here but here in this other file i'll share this um two lines of instructions in the description below um so if we just highlight these or just highlight them from the description of this video and then go to your default any file uh, default engine dot any what i'll do is just press enter go underneath and just control and v and now them two lines of instructions are in there but make sure they're in the render settings category here so you can see them highlighted here by bold text uh, so I'll just allow them in there and then we can just go up here and hit save and that'll quickly save uh, from there um, don't need to worry about that 
Okay, so now that has actually been added to the default engine.ini file. We'll close all that off and reopen our project again. Okay, welcome back. Um, so now we're in engine. Um, I'm ready to make our changes. If you're looking at my screen and thinking your screen looks different from mine, uh, that's because I use a different kind of layout uh, from the uh, default editor layout, which is there. So I've essentially created a new editor layout for myself, but I cannot load it from here because this is a new engine version, although it has kept the layout uh, that I used. But yours will maybe have this um, at the bottom and things like that. Let's move that up a little tad. Like so, first thing we're going to do is make my thumbnails too small. It's just how I work. Definitely the content folder. Okay, so what I want is two folders in here. One is going to be called Mesh. Like so. And we're going to right click, create a new folder. It's going to be called Material. What I'm going to do now, guys, is set up a simple master material that uses displacement. Uh, but we're going to create a mesh first. Uh, with engine version uh 5.4 um we have the modeling tools already enabled uh, which is great um and essentially we're going to use them now so at the top here where it says select more click the drop down go to modeling what i want to do here is create a sphere i'm going to go for a sphere and you can see we can just align it i could do tutorials on the modeling tools um ever since the you know, addition of modeling tools in UE4 um, and then into UE5. They progressively just got better. The UI of the, you know, modeling tools is so much better than it was. Uh, but for what we're using, we just need to use a simple bit. I may do tutorials on the modeling tools. They are very powerful, especially when doing block out for uh, levels. Uh, very powerful. Uh, the radius, um, I'll probably leave the radius as it is. First thing I want to do is show wireframe. As you can see, I've got quite a bit of um, subdivisions on my mesh, but I am going to up it a little bit to make the tessellation look better. Uh, so I'll just increase this by one, make it 32 on the subdivisions. And you can see that's a lot more high poly uh, for our mesh. What I'm going to do at the bottom here, new asset location, I'm going to choose current folder, go in the content drawer and navigate to mesh like so and then in here i'm just going to click here and click accept and that will create the mesh and in the um, folder mesh it's created that mesh in there as well um in previous versions you used to have to go to deform displace and all that good stuff but you don't have to do that now they've added the plugin uh, version it's all set up the displacement already uh, so we'll jump out of modeling mode and we'll go to our sphere and we can clearly see our sphere now let's move this up a bit off the ground you can clearly see it move it down a bit actually i've gone up a bit too far um i can easily rotate it um say i'm over here if you click on your mesh and just press f on your keyboard it zooms into it and then left alt on your keyboard and hold the left mouse button down uh, yeah, I, I presume this would be quite difficult on <laughs> laptops, but with a mouse and keyboard it's a lot easier. And you can just hold left alt and left click on your mouse and rotate your object or mesh. Um, first thing we need to do is enable Nanite on this mesh. So we come to the where you saved your mesh, or put your mesh. Uh, we're going to right click on it, go to Nanite at the top and just enable Nanite by clicking on enable Nanite. And we'll just double check again. And then it's available, uh, enabled, sorry. Um, you can also hover over it and it'll give you as much detail as it can. As you can see, there, enabled, uh, Nanite enabled, it's about halfway down the list, it's set to true. Um, our vertices are 219 and uh, triangles are 316, which is not too bad uh, for a high poly mesh like this. Okay, so now that is done, we'll do a quick save. Um, so selected. I'd advise not to do it on meshes like this. This is in engine content. Um, and once you do that, you'll just start corrupting your engine. Um, it won't let you save 
if you enable on the night on these it won't let you save it to be honest because um, he's just building blocks and when you're doing block out with building blocks you don't want to enable nanite on everything although nanite is powerful and reduces uh, uh, performance it still will build up and cost quite a bit nanite but anyway moving on let's make a material so i'm going to go to my content folder uh, go to materials i'm going to right click in here create a new material and we'll call this m for master and then uh, nanite displays underscore test okay so now we've done that we can right click straight on there create material instance um, and leave that as it is and we'll highlight our ball which is already there you can see i've got my orange line around it it's generally green mine I have a green line that highlights it because you can see it much better. Uh, but with this being a new engine version, uh, I'd have to go into the editor uh, settings and do all that nonsense again. Uh, but make sure you highlight it here. Go to your details panel and just click this little arrow, arrow, arrow. Click this little arrow here and it'll apply that um, material instance. Um, not sure what's going on here. Just like build. There you go. Um, so yeah, so now we've built that up, we open our uh, material, just like uh, finished building. Um, this is what I was mentioning a little earlier on, when you use a, a preview build, it is kind of unstable uh, in a way. But one thing they have added is this output node. Well, it's always been there, but never been able to edit it in such a way like this. Um, they introduced this kind of editing into uh, Substrate, which is quite good. Uh, but you can simply just click on them now and add a colour. I do that. You'll see it'll set a red here. And you can add the values in here. Um, so I need two for metallic. Just put one in there. Put zero on the roughness. And you can see we have full metallic. Well, that's great. That is great. Um, the only downside is the not parameters. Um, so you could only edit them in here, but for our testing purposes, uh, this is quite good. Okay, so now we've got our material. Uh, what we need to do is come down here and enable tessellation. Just enable that. And you'll see at the bottom here, it has displacement open now. But if you disable it, it closes displacement off. Uh, so we'll enable it. We'll scroll down a little bit more into the used category. And then we want to search for use nanite. It's already enabled it, so that's awesome. Um, so just make sure them two are enabled. You can come into the displacement section here and change the magnitude and the center. The center is where the center of your object, your mesh, um, the center point of your world where it'll displace from. Uh, but generally, the magnitude and center, you don't need to worry about this. Um, these kind of edits um, when creating a material for a mesh they're more in line for the landscape material i am going to do a landscape material with displacement uh, but it's going to be a material where you could just simply make a small scene by painting down textures but um, well, that's for another video um, if you're wanting to see a video like that where i create a material for uh, a landscape i have plenty of videos on my youtube for that uh, so hit subscribe notification bell and you'll be notified when that video comes out um, so yeah just let this build taking its time it's a preview build there you go right so what i need now is some textures uh, so i'm going to come to the top here this little box with the plus icon in go to quixel bridge now on a previous project that i've used i've already signed into quixel bridge um, so it should still be there. Yeah, I can see that these are still ticked. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Let it fall itself into place. Um, we're going to go for this texture because it really looks good uh, under the night. Um, so I'll re-download that. Uh, I'm not going to do my, uh, medium quality. I'm going to go for highest quality, which is 4K. As you can see, I've already downloaded it when I did a test uh, the other day. Uh, so I've got 
high quality, which is 4K. Uh, the highest quality is 8K, medium quality is 2K, and low quality is 512. Um, that's at least how I known it to be. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. Um, but we're simply going to add these textures to our project. Um, let's move this box up a little bit so we can open up our content drawer. Um, I'm getting stutters now because preview engine. Up here, you can see I've got a Mega Scans folder here now. Go to my services, Rocky Forest, and there they are. Yeah, 4K. Okay, so with. Um, well, that's nice. Nice metallic, that. It does look even better with substrate, um, but I will soon be doing substrate tutorials as well. Okay, so now we've got our textures. Let's drag them in to our material page. You can simply just click on them, highlight them all. Click and hold and drag up to the material. Should open that up and then just drop them in there. Um, we'll plug this straight into our albedo, which will get rid of that colour. Oh, it's still metallic. Um, we'll sort that out now. So what I'm going to do is hold one on the keyboard and left click. Just get a constant one vector. And we'll just put that into the metallic and the specular. And there you go. A nice little texture now. It does look nice. I'll make this a bit bigger. So we can R over the texture. But yeah, that's a nice 4K texture. Yep. Okay, so now we've done that. Um, because we're using a sphere in our scene, um, I'm going to use World Align Textures. Uh, so to do that, we'll use an integrated function called World Align. Uh, to get this menu up, we'll right click and just type World Align. And what we need is a World Align Texture here. And we also need one for the normal. So I'll do it again. Right click, World Align, and we'll get the World Align Normal. As you can see here, we have other advanced functions for World Align, uh, but we don't need them. And now we've got our World Align textures, uh, texture and normal functions. Like I say, these are integrated into Unreal Engine. Um, let's see if they've updated it some. Uh, nope, it's the same build. Never mind. Okay, so we have our World Align texture. Um, the texture object here the input for our texture will only take a texture 2d and at the minute this is a vector 3 the texture sample so it will not work uh, so what we need to do is convert these into texture objects so get your albedo texture sample right click and convert to texture object and what i'll do in case i showcase more textures i'll right click and convert to a parameter this can be our albedo uh, texture like so, and in the left hand corner here, the details panel, you'll see a group. I'll just call this textures. All right, so, and we'll rate this as a set priority number one. Uh, this will make sense soon. If you've been following me uh, on my channel all this time, when we've been creating our landscape material for Build World V2, you'll, you'll know where I'm going with this. Okay, so then we could just simply add that into there. All right, so. Uh, and from there, we can use the X, Y, and Z texture, which is the axes of our world align. Um, we'll drag off there. We'll go straight into multiply. I want to be able to edit the brightness of our uh, texture. So from here, I'm going to hold S on the keyboard and left click. And this is a scalar parameter, and we can add a uh, basically this enables options in our material instance, which I will showcase a little bit later on. And in here we'll go brightness, very simple. And we'll plug that into the B input of our multiply and that multiply will go straight into our base color. And you can see here it's completely black because there is no brightness. So on the left hand side, you can set up the uh, default values of what you want and your group and set priority and all that good stuff. So default volume, I'm going to go 0 0.85, 0 0.123450, five zeros and a 1. Now that value I've just entered there, 0 0.5 zeros and a 1. That is essentially the most minimum value you can go on the positive side until it goes to negative. 
And then for the slider max, I'll go for a two. Um, and in the group, I'll just change this to options. All right, so brightness can be top one. Um, we'll leave that there. Uh, but now you can see um, got a nice bit of brightness. If I click on brightness here, I can raise it. Um, it's really bright. Oh, I'll go really dark. All right, so uh, point, 0.95 would be good there, actually. Nice little bit of brightness. There's one thing I've noticed on this new build as well for um, Unreal Engine 5.4, the preview build, is back in the day you used to be able to slide these and it was dead quick, but now if I click on old, it moves it incrementally. So it's a lot, lot more slower and a lot, lot of more control, which is great. Anyway, moving on. We'll leave that as that. You can set up um, colour tinting and all that but I don't want to do that uh, for this tutorial um, so next we'll do our ORD texture the ORD texture is a stack texture if I double click it and open it and a stack texture essentially you have a ambient occlusion a roughness texture and a displacement texture that's what the ORD stands for occlusion roughness and displacement and they essentially stack three textures into one texture and this will enable and not enable but this will save space on your hard drive in the project and save on performance as well um, quite a common practice nowadays uh, but if i disable these channels you can see in the red channel ambient occlusion ambient occlusion is what creates shadows as you can see the little dark edges around the rock uh, right here uh, it's quite a nice texture that for a ambient occlusion if i'm being honest um green channel that's your roughness uh, the dark spots are where your roughness starts and the brighter spots are where it ends showcase that later and in the blue channel is our height texture the height texture is what drives our displacement on the mesh um, the brighter white colors is the height of the texture and the darker grayer colors are what drive the lower end of the height map or displacement if you like uh, so yeah that's a brief thing about um uh, stack textures with quicksilver bridge like i say common practice now stack textures with quicksilver bridge uh, but we're going to do the same here we're going to right click convert to texture object and then we'll right click again and convert to parameter this could be our alt our d texture um, like so, and we can simply add that into our textures category that we created with our albedo and the set priority can be two. So if I set this set priority as one and then this one as two and my normal will be three, that's the order in which it appears in my, um, if I just go to it, into the material instance, which is here, if I open the material instance, you can see nothing's happening now because I need to save this. So let me save it real quick. And this is the thing about preview builds. Uh, it takes a while to save. If I go to my thing here now, my uh, material instance, you'll see I've got an options here and the textures and it sets it up like this. It'll make sense uh, a bit later on. Okay, so now we've got our ORD texture, we can just simply duplicate our world align textures and then plug that into our texture input, which is our texture object input. Um, from here, um, with this being a world aligned texture, it only takes one input, but it can output a vector three. Um, and just like a showcase here, it's a stack texture. So in the blue channel, if I showcase this texture sample to showcase what I'm talking about, in the red channel of our ORD texture is our ambient occlusion, in the green channel is our roughness, and the blue channel is our displacement. Uh, but from here, we can't just plug this into each like a roughness, ambient occlusion and displacement. We have to split it out. So we can drag off here and a menu will open. We just type break out a float three. You want to choose break out float three. And going back to the texture sample here, you can see what I'm talking about. We've got a red channel, green channel and blue channel. And the same for these red, green and blue. And in our ORD texture, like I've just mentioned, 
uh, we have different textures pushed into there. So here we can expose what we need. Uh, so from here, we can now utilize our break float three to access each individual channel in our channel packed texture. Hopefully that makes sense. So our red channel, ambient occlusion, plug that straight into the ambient occlusion, uh, just like that build. You can see that the texture is really small. We'll change the texture size uh, shortly. Uh, so that's our ambient occlusion. Next is roughness. You could simply plug this into your roughness. Um, but what I like to do, because this is a master material, uh, we'll edit a min and max for our roughness. So hold L on your keyboard and left click, and this will get a linear interpolate, or lerp for short. And from our green channel, we'll plug it into the alpha. Uh, we'll hold S on the keyboard and get a scalar parameter. And it's going to be called roughness dash um, max. And then we'll duplicate that, left control and D, and change that max to a min. Like so. Um, what I will do, I'm going to highlight them both because both values are going to be the same. Uh, for a minimum, we'll do that again 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros and a 1. And then slider max, I'm going to set to a 1. All the difference is our max default value, I'm going to put a 9, 0.95. And our min is going to be a 0.5 for our roughness max and min. And we'll plug them into the lerp like so. And that can go straight into the roughness. Okay, and with that roughness set up, you're not going to see much change in the texture because we have a zero in the metallic and specular. Um, you could release the specular. And it'll make it dead shiny. And you can increase the roughness and all that. Uh, but for now... For the sake of this tutorial, we'll leave the specular off. Okay, last, not last, but the next one is our displacement. Um, we could just plug that straight in, and it should take an effect, but it has not. Um, but I want to be able to control our displacement. So I'm going to duplicate our multiply. You could duplicate your, your, your nodes if you want to use them again. Or for the multiply, hold M on the keyboard and left click. It'll give you a multiply. We'll plug that in there. We'll hold S on the keyboard and left click. And this can be called displacement uh, dash multi. Um, oh, in fact, I'll change that to height. So height. Um, we'll duplicate that again because we're going to use a secondary option for our displacement. And this can be sub height and essentially what I want to implement here this is what I used to do back in the Unreal Engine 4 days um, your sub height and your height so your height will set the maximum height at which your height map is displaced if that makes sense and the sub height changes the height at which the flat ground um, is set It'll make sense once we start editing our parameters and stuff like that. But for our, this could be our sub height. This is our sub height. So for here, we want to use a power node. Uh, so for here, we'll right click power. And essentially, a power node is a multiplying node, but it's by the power of two. So essentially, instead of multiplying it by one, which you do with the multiply node, you could do a multiply of one in here, but it, a power of one, but it multiplies it by two, if that makes sense. Uh, for here, we'll set a default value of 0.2.4. Oh, no, 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 no. 2.4, sorry. Um, we'll do our usual minimum, which is 0 0.1234.5.1. And for this, we'll do a, we'll just set it to a maximum of two. All right, so. Um, let's just copy sub height, left control and C. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate this because I want these to be the same. When the height, left control, oh, uh, left control and Z. We'll just type it out again sub height. That's up. And we'll plug that straight into our expo exponent input of our power node. The base will go into the multiply. And that will go into the displacement. 
Um, it's not currently having an effect. Um, let's just double check and make sure we enabled it. Yep, it's there. And use with static mesh. Uh, skeletal mesh. You could probably use Nanite with skeletal meshes now, to be honest, with this new build. Um, okay, so they don't allow the use with static mesh or static lighting. Um, I think that's because it's now integrated. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Okay, so we need our world align normal uh, function. We'll do the same with this. So we'll right click on there, convert to texture object, and right click again and convert to texture sample. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Texture object, right click and convert to parameter. And this could be normal texture. And we'll change that category to our texture category. And this can be three. And we'll fire that straight into our input for our normals. Now, let's just make sure we're using world space. Uh, so we'll click on the details panel and search normal. We're using tangent space. That's fine, actually. Uh, we can set a static boolean for world space. So you, you don't want to do that if you are creating a dynamic mesh. Okay, so from here we need to set up some sort of strength uh, for our normals. So we'll use that loop again, the linear interpolate. Pardon me, wrong button. Uh, left control and D. Got our loop. And essentially the way this works, what we need is what's called a vector 3, a constant vector 3. So if you hold 3 on your keyboard and left click, you'll get what's a constant vector 3. And if we put a one value in the Z axis, which is essentially down, up and down, um, that will create a normal map, but it's flat. There's no detail to it. It's just a fake normal, if you like. And what we could do is plug that into the A input and then our X, Y, and Z texture output from our world align normal, plug that into the B. Um, we can use a scalar parameter holding S on the keyboard and left click. And this can be normal uh, strength. Yep. So essentially, we can use this now to blend in between A and B. So A is our flat normal, and then B is our uh, normal map. So instead of, you know, increasing, essentially doing it this way you increase you, you set with a standard flat normal if i plug this into the normal output you can simply drag it up there or you can right click on the output and connect to normal and with that you can see it's still the same uh, there's not much detail but if i go to the normal strength and put a one in there let's do a five for demonstrations you can see we've got a lot of normal map added there um, doing it this way, so with a zero, you are just using this. It's a flat normal, there is no normal detail added, uh, so there's no real lighting calculations. That's what a normal map does, it just calculates lighting. Um, but with a normal strength of a default value of 0.85, minimum of 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a 1, and the maximum, I'm going to go for a 2 for maximum. Shouldn't really be using two as a normal. Uh, but if I get dead close now and increase this normal, you can see the normal details on the side of the rock here increasing uh, with that ambient occlusion. Uh, but for default, 0.85, uh, which is fine. Um, and yeah, so that is pretty much it with this material. Uh, should we go and test it? So let's just make sure we're all in the same category textures category and um, I want all these options into the options category I'm just going to highlight them all by holding left control down and clicking and dragging and then where it says multiple values in the group section click and go to options now you can set up an order I've started here with a one uh, roughness max can be two well, I'm just going to work my way down adding the set priorities and you'll see why in the material instance shortly like so and this can be six 
Okay, so, oh wait there, before we proceed, if I just save that now. Let's save. Like I say, this is a preview build, so it can take time. Um, if I go into here now, uh, you can see actually there is some deformation to the mesh. If you look at the top here, you can see the deformation to the mesh. So the nanite is kicking in, but it does need to be edited a little bit. If I go to the um, material instance, you can see all my options are here, ready to be used. Uh, what I want to do is add some texture additions, um, texture size. So we can simply, um, what I'll do, I'll just get a scalar parameter here. This can be texture size. Like so, um, I'm wondering if we need, let me just open up this real quick. Let's all texture, texture size, you're using absolute values here um, and absolute well position. So we don't need to use what's called a texture coordinate. If you hold down U on the keyboard and left click, you'll get a texture coordinate. And sometimes you'll multiply these two together to get the right uh, correct texture size, but you don't need to do that. Uh, so that means we can simply drag that into our texture size here. So if I do that, uh, but with us using, um, put that in there. with us using world, um, well, what are they called? World UVs, let me come, bear with me. Um, world position so with us using the world position node which is in um, a data node uh, we, our texture is going to be tiny so i basically i'm reckoning this will be 20 30 no 50. oh in fact because we're using world position this is to get the correct scale it needs to be 100 and that's our correct scale um, minimum Minimum will set to a one, maximum. You might want to change it, so we'll go 200. Uh, this can be put into the options. And in this set priority, I'm going to put a zero. So our texture size is right at the top of our material instance. Okay, so that's pretty much our master material built. Um, here's our material instance. We'll go to our section here. Uh, what I want to do now is just test this. Hold F on the keyboard. Um, let's enable some of these options here. Being weird. There you go. As you can see, I've got my um, textures here. Close them, we don't need them. Uh, let's test our um, material instance for our master material. Very simple, um, very simple master material for meshes um, but yeah let's have a look so texture size increase that as you can see it changes the texture size uh, this could probably be edited a little bit more so you could center out the texture uh, default 100 which is fine uh, brightness increase the brightness but the sliding there for these scalar parameters is just great it doesn't like go really fast like it used to. That's a nice addition to engine, uh, engine version 5.4. But yeah, you can see there the brightness is working fine. So that's the default, like so. Uh, roughness, turn these down, uh, like so. Nothing will change, like I said earlier on, because we have um, zero in the metallic and specular. Um, maybe I could just disable it from the specular, just to try this. Um, so we should get some shining now on our mesh. Um, there we go, third person. You can see the shine now coming off the uh, mesh, especially at the bottom round here. Works quite well with that lighting actually. Uh, but if I increase the minimum, so you can see that shininess starting to go. Increase the maximum. It'll 
definitely fully rough this out. And I'll set that maximum to one. And you can see now there's very little shininess on our roughness. So zero, zero, and there you go. You can see the difference. Especially, I'm gonna change it back to default. And if you just watch the edge of the sphere, if I change these back to default, like so. Yeah, that's a roughness changing, yeah, which is nice. So, but here's the important part, displacement. If I increase the height, that's increased that, um, it has increased it. If I increase the sub height, I do that now, just check around there. We are starting to deform. Um, like I say, the sub height, the normals, wait there. Increase the normal strength. I don't know why you want it on two, but it just shows off lighting even more. If I put zero, one. I'd say 0 0.95 will work with the displacement. If I increase, keep increasing the sub height, and the sub height lowers the mesh. As you can see now, we're starting to get the displacement coming through, which is nice, but essentially sub height, as you can see, it pushes the surface of the texture down and then the actual height pushes the height up. Just keep increasing that and you'll get yourself more and more displacement. And that, guys, is how you have displacement on your mesh and like so very easy like i said sub height the surface not where the rock oh hello not where the rocks are here but the surface of the texture here with the sub height it increases that height there but then if i do the sub height it's increased you can see the lighting changing on the sub height you know, in between the little twigs here and that, if you look there, you can see the lighting is changing there. But then, this height is what increases it all. You can actually lower that down and increase the sub height to get a more detailed uh, view of your texture. Okay, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty much basic material uh nanite displacement uh, works out the box and essentially you could uh, come to your master material here uh, which is here just right click create a new material instance and you can open that material instance it's the same as what we're using here but you can go in here highlight these and change the texture and put a different texture in from quicksil bridge and it's all set up ready to go uh, easy as that okay so i know it's been a kind of a long video uh, if you go through my channel uh, i do like to give more of a detailed uh, tutorials over new things like this i do like like i say go through details i'll tell you how it works why it works and all that good stuff um, obviously a lot more other videos online are just like do this do this do this follow me but you're not really learning why it's doing that um, so that's what I mainly do on my channel. Uh, I also have a series out, um, which is called Build Worlds V2, where we're creating a game world uh, by sculpting the landscape using world partition and all that good stuff and creating a pretty decent uh, landscape material. Uh, so check that out. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, uh, feel free to join the Discord if you have any questions. Um, feel free to donate if you're feeling generous. Uh, times are hard at the minute <laughs> um, and most importantly subscribe hit the notification bell and be ready for my next tutorial where i may be starting on creating a landscape material using nanite displacement which i have not done for such a long time uh, so i'll see you again guys thank you bye